Welcome to another exciting edition of Hidden in the Universal Vault. I'm Ron, your host, and I'm walking you to my my next Christmas movie review. Yes, we're continuing to, to the, we're continuing the tradition of Christmas movies. So now we'll this time take a look at a horror Christmas movie, and this this is this yeah a horror Christmas movie, and this stars Adam Scott, Tony Collette. And David Kushner, along alongside M.J. Anthony, we are taking a look at from from Legendary Pictures and Universal from director Michael Dougherty. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. 2015's Krampus or Krampus, however you want to pronounce it. Krampus, Krampus. I'm just going to say Krampus for the sake of this video. Now, Krampus is a movie I have seen before, but I haven't reviewed on the channel. And this is my second watch of this. And when I did watch this, when I did watch it for the first time, I thought it was just okay. I thought it was an okay horror movie. And it wasn't anything too special. After my second view, I had a lot of fun with this film. This is a really fun Christmas horror film. Now, if you're not familiar, familiar with the Krampus lore, Krampus was a was a uh, supernatural, fictitious. Well, not really fictitious, but it was a supernatural uh, Christmas thing, mostly in Hungary. That if you are naughty, he sends you straight to hell automatically. Krampus takes that spin, but basically sets it basically sets it in modern time. The film focus on the film focus on. Um, uh, it focused on Adam Scott. Uh, he's the father. Basically, it focused on it focused on dysfunctional family. A boy named Max who decides he wants to not have a good Christmas. So he thinks Christmas is just not the same. But he's coped with his father, played by Adam Scott. His mother, played by Tony Collette, who basically they're not really together, and they don't really like to celebrate the holidays when his his uncle and his cousins come over and let me move that side there we go and he basically he basically doesn't want Christmas to happen turns out this supernatural being known as Krampus comes in every Christmas to basically try to ruin not really ruin Christmas but to make their Christmas into a nightmare so He's then ascends to go after this family. So he throws the letter out the window and all of a sudden it snows, it freezes, and everything is like chaos ensues. So they have to stay in the house, they get warm, but the grandmother tells of this legend, like I said, called Krampus. And it's, yeah. And basically they have to go hunt down this. So Krampus sends out his minions from clowns to gingerbread men to just all kinds of these weird toys, these evil toys, and stuff like that. So they're hunting down all these evil toys and gingerbread men. Uh, basically, that's the whole setup of what Krampus really is. And it's, like I said, a lot of fun. If you like that, if you like 80s horror, or if you like movies like Gremlins, this has a very, this has a very Gremlins feel. A little bit of planes, trains, automobiles, and any other Christmas Christmas movie you can think of that's set in the 1980s. And Michael Dowdy, Dowdy, I think it's Dowdy. I'm butchering the last name. Well, he came from the heels of the Halloween horror movie Trick or Treat from 2008. So, very visually, the effects on Krampus is great. It's actually done by Peter Jackson's studio, Weta Studios. It's definitely better than George Lucas's Industrial Light of Magic that I've covered their films, and I their, their effects are hit and miss. They're kind of cheesy. But when it comes to the Weta Studios, they did a phenomenal job on this. The action's really good. The pacing's great. I actually like the snow set at sort of pitch dark. I was going to watch this in the middle of the dark, but I didn't. So it's like I said, it's it's a ton of fun. The cast is really good. 
I like I said again, I appreciate I appreciate now. I think it's pretty fun. I think it's fun. It was okay my first watch, but now that I rewatch it, I do appreciate what the movie is doing. And like I said again, this is just a boatload of fun. So oh I forgot to mention Kachika Farah. Uh, from Two and a Half Men and my favorite comedy of 2002, Mr. Deeds, is in this as well. Uh, Allison Toman, I forgot, is also in this. But this is also, this is the second movie, maybe second or third movie I covered to have Adam Scott in it. The previous movie I covered on the channel was Leap Year, and I thought he was really good in that. Adam Scott's a really good actor. I, I really think he's very talented. If you watch the show Parks and Rec, you'll probably know who he is. And the creature effects is good. I do like how they have a gin, the uh, gingerbread man and just the kid's eating a gingerbread man and he just smiles and winks and shoots the kid up the chimney and out he comes. This is a time where Kushner, Kushner and Scott are like out in the middle of the winter and he's got an arsenal and he's like saying, you gotta, I gotta keep my um, shepherds a flock. So he's like, has a gun, he has a shotgun, he has a magnum, and they're just shooting all kinds of crazy, crazy things. The creature effects is like, really good. I really think, like I said, they did a really good job with the effects. Now in terms, also, um, a a MJ Anthony, who is really good. I also have, the other movie he made for the studio was Chef, and I do have that movie. And I do plan on covering that. I did watch the commentary a little bit. I kind of like watched a little bit of it. And it's a really good commentary. I'll talk about the special features now. Before I show you the artwork. Special features. Yeah. Um, let's talk about that ending. I'm going to kind of go into spoiler a little bit. But if you don't want to hear my thoughts. I just skip ahead whatever minutes. Or stop this video. And go watch and go watch the movie, then come back to me, and I can tell you more about it. I'm going to talk about the ending, because the only ending I have to talk about. Here is my big problem with the movie. The ending kind of sucks. This was a pretty bad ending. I mean, the problem with that ending was, and it just... Okay, here's the spoiler now. The kid eventually comes out, the whole family comes out of the house, the, gr the, the grandmother... Gets, fights Krampus, she shoots up, and then Adam Scott and his family are walking through the snow, and he's telling them, keep moving forward, I'll take care of it. So he's firing shot after shot after shot, and he just drops down. The sister drops down, too. Then the mother, Tony Collette, she drops down, too. So he survives out there. The son encounters Krampus and says, Hey, asshole. So, he's like telling him that. I just wanted a good Christmas. I just wanted the family to come back. So, he confronts Krampus, take me instead. So, he drops his sister down into hell. And he gets dropped down into hell. Turns out it was all a dream. Essentially, it's the ending to if you if you read or watch a Christmas Carol, that's how that ended. Or even the Disney, even Mickey's Christmas Carol did the same thing where they shoot him down into there. If you have watched that, you know about that. But it's actually twenty December twenty fifth, so they're all opening gifts, all that. He gets a bell. They all stand. Pan up there, you see Krampus and a bunch of snow globes. He grabs a snow globe, and all the creatures do all these shaky effects. Credits. Let's talk about the alternate ending now. This alternate ending is even worse than the original ending. This is just my big complaint of why alternate endings don't work in movies. They never do, and they never will. So, that's what I call it. Now, mind you, does that make it a bad movie? No, I think it's fun. I just th I just think the ending is one big dumpster fire. The ending should have never been used and should have went with a more different ending. They go sort of a Goosebumps ending in the original 90s Goosebumps series where it just ends 
It does make you think, but it made me just puzzle say, that's it? That's the ending? Yeah, I would almost say, yeah. If it wasn't for the first half, I would recommend this. But the ending was just so bad. It reminded me of the ending to Devil, a movie I covered on the channel, which had a bad ending. But that movie was worse because it just was boring. This movie was fun, except for that ending. I just have to get over that, that, that as well. So, that I talked about. Now let's actually take a look at the artwork. So, yeah, I'm really digging the artwork. This is some sweet artwork. I would have would expect them to use the poster art, but this is okay. And we got the artwork. You got the scene with the gremlins, all that yada yada. That scene right there with the grandmother who some upon Krampus or Krampus, however you want to pronounce him. We got the crew right there. Not crew, but we got the actors. Yep, so this movie... Now this movie is PG-13. There is a Screen Factory 4K called The Naughty Cut. Um, I probably will never watch that because, like I said again, I can't play newer Blu-rays upstairs. So I would have to get a Blu-ray player or hook up a PS4 in order to watch that. So uh, I'm only going what the theatrical cut does. Maybe The Naughty Cut might be better. I might appreciate that. But yeah, um, special features. As I said, we got... The dumpster fire on an ending. We also got deleted and extended scenes. A gag reel. The naughty ones meet the cast. And I did watch that. That's pretty cool. There's actually a special feature probably on the, the Blu-ray exclusive. Which is inside Weta Studios. That, that's not on the DVD. A gallery which includes the poster. Poster gallery. I did look at that. And I did look at some other stuff. And the commentary of filmmakers. I did watch that. And that was a really good commentary. So, this is where I think this is probably cool. I normally don't, but check the disc art. This is just some sweet disc art. This is how you make disc art. I give Universal kudos for doing disc art on new movies. They don't do that anymore, but I do like this disc art. It's really snazzy. Some pretty cool stuff. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So, anyways. So, yeah. Final verdict, should you see Krampus? If you can ignore that ending, yes. I can recommend this wholeheartedly. This movie is a fun watch from start to finish. I had a good time with this. I thought it was just going to be okay, and I thought maybe I, if I watched it another time, I thought it would be in the same, th same vein as my first watch of this. But after a second viewing of this and doing a review for this new series... This new, yeah, this new series I'm doing, Hidden in the Universal Vault, which I've been doing months. So, yeah, um, months. I can recommend Krampus to anybody. If you want a horror movie and something to watch around the holidays, give Krampus a watch. And I'll probably watch this one again. It's honestly not that long of a movie. This movie is only about an hour and 38 minutes. It goes pretty fast. That might be another problem. But like I said, the only negative I had with this movie was its ending. I I wouldn't even I'm still recommend the movie. I still think it's a ton of fun. It's just if they would have tweaked the ending out a bit, then this would have been then this would have been a this would have been another Christmas classic. This would have been right there like Gremlins. Right there with Gremlins or anything like that. And Michael Dowd Dow, Dowdley? said in the commentary that he wanted, according to the commentary, he also said this. I'm going to mention some things in the commentary that he said. In the commentary, he wanted to do, he said he wanted to do a uh, Christmas horror movie. But he got sick and tired of movies that having a guy in a Santa suit with an axe. He got tired of that. Another movie that just came out was Violent Night, which was also a sort of a Christmas horror movie. Another killer Santa movie. He wanted to do that, though, but he literally wanted to make it PG-13 so the teen crowd could get into this because you, because horror movies can be scary. If they're rated R and they're just full of blood, you're not scary, you're just gross. That's the thing. Horror movies have to be scary. If there are and it's just more in the gore, you're not a scary movie. You're not a horror movie, you're just gross. 
And I think that's what, what he said in the commentary from what I made. The whole kit cast was all New Zealand, people from New Zealand. They actually shot this on location in New Zealand, which is really, really cool for them. I think the director is from New Zealand. So, yeah, um, that's all I know about the commentary from what I watch. So, yeah, and the end credits is cool because they use family photos of the crew. So the end credits kind of remind me a little bit of Knocked Up's end credits where they show family photos. That I do like. So, yeah, that's all I can say about Krampus. So, yeah, thank you guys for watching my review of Krampus. If you do like the content on the channel, please stop by the channel. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh, ring the bell. Let me know what you guys think of Krampus. And like I said, again, I'll have another review coming up very soon. So, so that's it. So, as always, guys, as always, keep watching those Universal movies, and I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.